What's up people, Dobbs Rules is right here and welcome to Game Gems, the show that we talk about the treasures in my collection. Now, last episode we talked about the Game Boy Color. Now, I wanted to go ahead and do the Game Boy Advance, however, it w it's quite difficult for me to choose on what is my absolute top 5 gems because I do have quite a lot of Game Boy Advance games, so that has to be put on hold. So, we're going to fast forward a few years later to move on to the next console of handhelds. And that is the Nintendo DS. Oh boy, the Nintendo DS was a godsend for us on handhelds. Everybody was getting bored of the normal Game Boy Advance SP and all them lot and, the, and all them type of games. We wanted something new. We want, of course, it was around about that same era when iPhones and iPods were starting to get made. Touch screens were coming into a thing. So Nintendo grasped it, grasped, grasped it by the bollocks and made the very first actual commercial touch screen console, which was, of course, the Nintendo DS. Now the DS had hundreds, and I mean thousands though, of video games. And there's been some absolute belters. However though, there has been some proper big stocky store fillers that not a lot of people love. But, I went through my collection, which is around about 300 Nintendo DS games, boxed and unboxed. And I found picked my solid five that I would recommend you guys to play if you're like me. Now I've got five right here. We're gonna, we're gonna go right through them with you. Let's get this started. Um, I want to go ahead and put the my absolute favourite one right at the bottom because I have to. So the first one I'm going to talk about is from a cr creation from Atari. Yeah, Atari made this as well as Rising Star Games, and that's Lunar Genesis. Now, Lunar Genesis is the return of the RPG legend. Now, this is pretty much the story of Luna, and Luna came out years, years before this. But what this was is that it's a full-on find, buy, and use type of game. It's a proper RPG. Now, you may be thinking, there's loads of different RPGs, though, so which one is it? This one's pretty much like a, um, not a time-based type of RPG, more like a combat RPG. So pretty much, you find a monster, bang, you attack it, you level up and press on. It's not like a Final Fantasy one where you step into the grass and then, boom, and a massive, a massive appearance happens. But I tell you what though, that this game has a killer story. This game has a fantastic story. Don't really want to spoil it for you, but it is awesome because what this game is, I'll read the blurb to you. See how the cult Lunar series started in this completely original prequel to the classic RPG series. Join Gion Luc Lucia and the host of diverse characters in an epic tale describing the birth of the Lunar Universe in a traditional RPG filled with combat, exploration and hundreds of mini quests to complete. Now if you guys are a massive fan of the Lunar series and you've not heard of this one, you have to play this one first because it's the prequel of them all. Now. Does it really hold up to all the other Lunar games? 100% definitely. It is a fantastic game. And then once again, it has a killer story, like I said. Fantastic story. Don't want to spoil it for you. And the um, combat is very straightforward. It's not difficult. It's it's literally a 10-year-old can easily do it. Easily. A 3-year-old, actually. So that's why I'm picking Lunar Genesis to be my, one of my picks for game gems on the Nintendo DS. If you guys don't own one of these, please get yourself a copy of this if you're into these type of games, but also try and get it on emulator if you can find it. Next up, it is a Legend of Zelda game that not a lot of people really talk about, which is quite mysterious though, because I think it's actually one of the top ones out there for Legend of Zelda, and that is Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. This game is so enjoyable. And of course it has one of my favourite links in the game, Toon Link. And to be honest, it has all the mechanics that the DS gives to you 
and put it in this game. Now, a lot, a lot of Nintendo DS games didn't even use them, but this one did. It had the blowing mechanism where it has the little tiny microphone in it. You start blowing it to make make yourself um, hurricanes. You use your um, stylus pen to start swiping weapons with your sword. You use it to um, maneuver your train to the next area. It has a fantastic story, people. It literally has a fantastic story. And of course, having Zelda and Link be together right from the very get-go is very unique as well when it first started. Of course it's not unique anymore because they've done it with a lot, a lot of games now like Breath of the Wild and all them lot. But this was like one of the first that they ever did it, having Legend, having actual Zelda and Link together right in the start of the game. Which is so damn good because you always have to wait for a couple of hours until you find Zelda until she starts talking to you. Which is freaking phen phenomenal to be honest people. And it has a killer soundtrack too. Now, about this though, why was this never talked about a lot by a lot, a lot of fans? Because this game pretty much came out around about the same span as where a lot of people were actually getting sick and tired of the Nintendo DS and also wanting something new, which of course did happen. But as well as that though, this was from about the same era which was, uh, what year was this again? This was in 2009. 2009 was around about, the, around about that era where get, the game war was at its full on potential. Where Xbox and PlayStation were fighting so hard, people were forgetting about Nintendo. And Nintendo just literally just fell off the board for a minute. And that's why I think a lot, a lot of people never really talked about this game a lot because it was in that same year where Xbox and PlayStation were actually thriving in scores whilst Nintendo was in the back seat. But still though, Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks, definitely a gem in my eyes, fantastic. I'll let you guys tell you, I'll tell you now people, give it a go. Next up, this game recently, I picked this up recently from CEX and this is from Square Enix and that is Legend of Cage 2. Never heard of the first one, didn't have a clue this ever existed. But it's made by, it's developed by um, Taito, or Tito, Team Taito, or whatever you want to call it. It's a side-scrolling fighting game. That's what it is. Now, to be honest though, what I see in this game has a mixture of Ninja Gaiden, with the samurai stuff, Castlevania, and... Um, Um, what you call it? What was that? Um, dragon, uh, dragon, dragon, oh, what was it called again? Um, Double Dragon. So yeah, Castlevania, Ninja Gaiden, Double Dragon. Put them together, you get this. That's what I'm pretty much saying. It's a lot, a lot of fun. The enemies are really, really tough to face down as well. I played this game on hard mode, and I regret it massively. I should have played it on easy. And what this really does. Once again though, it doesn't really use its full potential on the DS with its stylus pen and all that lot, but still though, it holds a lot of um, praises upon me that it has a fantastic story. It really, the story literally grasps you right from the very get-go. And like I said though, it is one of them type of games that it is pretty much you're helping a helpless princess throughout the game like all video games are like nowadays, back in the day. And, DS era with a lot of princesses that need to be help, need to be um, um, rescued. Um, but as well though, this game also consists of two playable characters in the game, which is something not a lot of um, DS games really had. But there was a few of them out there, but they were mainly rare games or they were very uncommon or not very much loved upon. But I could definitely say though, Legend of Cage 2 is definitely a game I would definitely recommend you guys to definitely play. Next up, this game is, all without further doubt people, has the best cutscenes, the best mechanics, and I can actually say can rival Final Fantasy Tactics. And that is Luminous Arc. This game is fucking amazing. I'm telling you now people, this game is phenomenal. It really is. 
Is it difficult? Yes. It's a difficult game. Do you need to be strategic? Yes, you need a lot of strategy to get this game done. And once again, it has the same mechanics as Final Fantasy Tactics, like a chessboard area. However, leveling up your characters is extremely important in this game. And the story, though, the story, though, is absolutely hot breathtaking. I love it. Protect the light, condemn the darkness. A millennium of peace is about to be torn apart by the spread of dark forces as a horde of witches return to wreak havoc on the land. It's pretty much a story about good and evil. That's all it is about. Pretty much, if you, if literally, this is pretty much, everybody could probably say, oh, this is a Final Fantasy ripoff, so there's no wonder why he's going to pick it. Nowhere near Final Fantasy. Nowhere near it. But all I can say is, though, it is a absolute amazing game. And I've played it many, many times for hours upon hours. Never got to beat in the game, but the story, though, always makes me want more. And it still pains me I never got to freaking finish the game. It really does. Probably in, in the near future, I may go back and play it again, try and beat it. But all I can really say is, though, this game is literally one of my favourite DS games ever to be made. And it's 100% a gem in my eyes. Definitely recommend it. Definitely give it a play, people. But now number one for me. Now, the reason why this is number one is because it's the one that really I love the most out of anything that was involved with TCG. I'm talking about Yu-Gi-Oh here. Yu-Gi-Oh GX Spirit Caller. Now, why is this my absolute must, must to go DS game? Why is it a gem in my eyes? Now, Yu-Gi-Oh! is not well known to make absolute amazing video games, except for there is one on the PS1, there's a few on the PS2, and of course there is actually one on the Xbox original and on the GameCube. But on the DS, there's not a lot of them that are quite amazing, including the PSP stuff. But this one is definitely up there as like one of the best. Why? Because it's the whole freaking series of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX in this game. Yes? Not the whole series, because this game came out around about the midway through of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. So pretty much this is telling the story of Season 1, Season 2, and maybe Season 3? I don't remember. I think so. Before Yui Bell, okay? Before the story of Yui Bell. Now, you don't play as Jade and Yugi. You never play him. You get to face him. You play as your own character. You start off with a standard deck. You build up money. You buy packs. You build a deck. You win. You continue the story. However, though, this is the one of the only Yu-Gi-Oh! Jinx games that actually had a game over sequence in this game. Now, there is a few of them out there that actually do actually have it, like um, Dueling Nightmares, um, Lost um, Forbidden Memories and um, one on the GameCube, but also this one had a very, very good way of telling you having a game over. If you go into the Shadow Realm and you lose, it's game over. You lose your save death data. But if you play normally, you don't, you're not going to get them up. You're not going to get a game over. However, though, this game is freaking ace, though. That's all I have to really say is there's so much I can talk to you about this. I can make an angry video game, well, a happy video game nerd video about this all alone. But it would take me hours to talk about how good this game is. Some people may disagree with me, but I am sticking with my guns. This game is my absolute favourite DS game of all time. And it's definitely a gem in my eyes, too. If you guys... Wanna check out this game? If you are a massive Yu-Gi-Oh fan like I am, you're gonna love it. 100% you're gonna love this game. If you're not a Yu-Gi-Oh fan, I would definitely encourage you guys to miss out on it. Or if you are a bit intrigued, definitely give it a go. However, that is all I've got time for today, people. That's my five choices on the Nintendo DS. Of course, there is a lot of other D Nintendo DS games that are absolutely awesome. Of course, you already know the Mario games, the Pokemon games, the Metroids, the Castlevanias. You get my gist. But like I said, some of them are quite extremely rare. And like I said, I'm not using Pokemon or Resident Evil or, um, or um, Final Fantasy or any of the others because they are my treasured 
franchises that I play. I have to go with the ones that I don't full on follow as video game titles. So yes, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Spirit Caller, um, Luminous Arc, The Legend of Cage 2, Legend of Zelda Spirit Trek, and of course, Lunar Genesis. If you guys enjoyed it, I surely did, make sure you smash the like button. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. For about 87% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel, but you still watch my videos. So what the fuck are you lot doing? Subscribe! It's free! And of course, massive shout out to Sawform. They are amazing as always. They're the ones that help me find the games that I absolutely do want for my personal collection. And with that being said, the people I'm going to to you guys subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheerio!